Hi, this is the class seven video. We read up to page 107 for today, which takes us up to the end of part one of the book. For this video, I want to go over the exercise on tenant screening and justice and give you a sense of what I'm looking for and point you to some parts of the book that are relevant to it. So, um, the section on tenant screening begins when Tobin, Lenny, and Office Susie go to landlord school. Remember that the city has been threatening to shut down the trailer park, but they agree to um, keep, let, him, let Tobin keep it open if he will do things to show that he is going to be the kind of landlord that they want him to be. So they uh, send him essentially to uh, landlord school. It's like if you get a, a ticket for reckless driving and you have to go to uh, driving, safe driving school. In any case, the first question asks, just asks about tenant screening because uh, the first thing that Tobin is told in landlord school is that he has to do better tenant screening. Um, and so I just wanted to ask you what sorts of things tenants normally screen for? What are they asking Tobin to screen for? In your experience, what do landlords screen for? Desmond then transitions to talking about the effect of tenant screening on the city as a whole. Let me just read this passage. The small act of screening could have big consequences. From thousands of yes-no decisions emerged a geography of advantage and disadvantage that characterized the American city. Good schools and failing ones, safe neighborhoods or safe streets and dangerous ones. Landlords were major players in distributing the spoils. Where you live has a huge impact on how your life goes. What neighborhood you're from, what kind of neighborhood you're from, affects how your life goes in American society. And landlords are controlling that. So the next question just asks you uh, to fill in some details about that. Then, though, in the book, uh, Desmond turns back to talking about um, landlords that don't screen, right? And so one of the things I ask in, in question one was, how does um, Tobin's practice and Sharina's practice, for that matter, compare with the practice, the screening practices that we've been talking about currently. And so once again, I just want to point you to this passage. Some landlords neglected to screen tenants for the same reason payday lenders, lenders offered unsecured high interest loans to families with unpaid debt or lousy credit. And then toward the end of that paragraph, he says, there was a business model at the bottom of every market. So the questions, these first two questions just are asking, um, you know, why do tenants screen? I mean, why do landlords do tenant screening? Why do different landlords do tenant screening differently? And what is the effect of this on the city? After that, I want you to go back and think about something we read earlier. Um, Political Responsibility and Structural Injustice by Iris Marion Young. In that, she discusses something that she calls the liability model of responsibility. Um, and so that's on page seven. I, I'm showing you the uh, relevant passages here. You have to go on to the next bit. So I just want you to explain what that is. And then question four is really the crucial question here. Um, questions one through three are just about calling your attention to things that we've read and making you think through their implications. Question four is the tricky one because what I want you to do is apply a theory to something that we've already, uh, something you've already looked at. So in this case, um, it is the liability model of responsibility and the political model of responsibility. Question is, what do these have to say about the practice of tenant screening? Um, remember that 
liability, uh, the liability model and the political model were both ways of dealing with injustice. Um, and the liability model dealt with in individual injustice and the political responsibility model dealt with structural injustice. So what you need to think about is whether you can uh, characterize uh, tenant screening as a structural injustice and then what, how do people's responsibilities play out for this? Responsibilities of landlords, tenants, anyone who is involved in the government of a city, that sort of thing. So that's going to be the trickiest question, but that's also where I'm hoping you'll be able to do the um, most, the deepest thinking. All right, before I let you go, I want to focus your attention on one last really weird bit in this section. So at the end of the landlord training school, uh, the teacher, Karen, says that she wants the audience to repeat after her, this is my property. This is my property. Um, and then in the end, all of these landlords are chanting together, this is my property. And so uh, there's a lot to think about here that can play into your answers to those previous questions. What, how's a landlord going to behave if he has been chanting this or she has been chanting this to herself in her head? And also, why does the city want landlords to be chanting this? Because this is government mandated land, landlord school. Okay, that's the stuff for ex the exercise on tenant screening. Next up for class eight, we're going to be covering another essay by Iris Marion Young. Class eight is going to look a, a little bit different on Canvas because it is spread over three separate Canvas pages. And that's just because for the exercise, you are each going to be assigned a random face of oppression, and I needed to use the Canvas quizzes feature for that.